Hi, welcome back. In the last video, you got a nice introduction to the world of computer audio, uh, primarily with a focus on virtual instruments. And one topic we covered was the idea of there being two different types of virtual instruments, uh, the sampled variety and the synthesized variety. Um, and we had mentioned that virtual drumline is a sampled variety. So I'm here in Contact Player 2. I've got a snare line manual instrument loaded up. And I just wanted to play a few sounds just so you could hear some of the, the actual sampled sounds that were recorded for the library. There, so that's, that's just a few, but you can actually hear their recorded sounds. You know, they're not synthesized sounds. They were actually recorded with a microphone, and then all of these samples were compiled together to create instruments, and the instruments were compiled together to create a library. Um, so those are just a few important terms uh, that you'll want to, to remember in the future. For instance, this snare line manual is this .nki file, which is a uh, native instruments contact instrument. Um, and then here under multis, we have the native instruments contact multi.nkm. Uh, you can also have nkb, which is native instruments contact banks, but that's a topic we'll cover later. Um, the next thing I want to cover is the difference between Contact Player and the full version of Contact. Uh, the biggest difference is that uh, Contact Player, uh, while it has a lot of the functionality in terms of loading instruments and saving multis, um, doesn't have some of the features that Contact has. For instance, if I click here on the little cogs, uh, that just brings up my instrument options and things you can configure um, for the instrument. Uh, so I'll go ahead and close that. Um, and really all you have the ability to do here on the left side is navigate the libraries and instruments. So any contact player instruments uh, or libraries that you have installed will show up here. Now if I swap over to the full version of contact, you can see here over on the left side there's quite a few more tabs. Um, now I'm in contact 4, but you would have a lot of the same options even in contact 2, uh, the, the comparable version for when contact uh, player 2 came out. Um, so then you can move on here to the Libraries tab. This will be similar to Contact Player. Uh, but here on this Files tab, this is actually more or less uh, a file browser. You're able to load in individual waves and samples if you'd like. Um, but if you do own the full version of Contact, feel free to explore here. Check out the manual. Um, the thing I want to focus on a little more, uh, coming over here, clicking on that same Edit button that I did in Contact Player 2, this will actually allow me to edit and make changes to this virtual drumline instrument. Um, for instance, I've got the mapping editor already open. Uh, you can see here, um, each little blue column is actually a sound. For instance, right here, these are the, the buzz roll sounds. These are my hit sounds. And each time there's a little line here, that's actually a different... Uh, different velocity levels. So you can see where some of them kind of overlap. Uh, but this would be your softer sample. And then gradually getting louder up to these higher velocity samples. Um, so that's the biggest difference there uh, between Contact uh, and Contact Player 2 is that uh, Contact is actually a full featured sampler. And there are other things you can edit in here, but um, that's where I'm going to leave that. The next topic I wanted to cover is the idea of using, uh, whether it be Contact Player or the full version of Contact, using them as either a standalone or a plugin. So I've got a little visual aid here, something we can check out. First, we'll talk about the idea of running Contact or Contact Player as a standalone. Uh, and basically, what that means is you start up the software on its own, it's not running within any other software. Uh, and normally, uh, you'll have some sort of MIDI controller, whether it be a, a MIDI keyboard or uh, a Malik hat or, uh, or an actual MIDI sequencer or notation software uh, that's really just kind of used as the, the controller or the sequencer. And you'll be sending MIDI data out of that, um, whether it be through an actual MIDI setup um, on an audio interface or something along those lines or a virtual MIDI cable all within the computer, which will then get sent to contact or contact player. Um, and, you know, that's one way to go about doing it. And uh, prior to, um, especially with Finale and Sibelius, uh, allowing you to run plugins, that was the way you really had to do it. Um, but now uh, you're able to run Contact and Contact Player 2 as plugins. 
Um, and basically the way that works is you'll have some sort of host program. Uh, in most people's cases, when writing music for uh, you know, percussion ensemble, marching band, indoor drum line, you'll most likely use either Finale or Sibelius. But you could also use uh, a digital audio workstation, whether it be a Logic, Cubase, Sonar, um, Pro Tools, or something along those lines. Um, and uh, you'll essentially be sending MIDI data inside the program to the plugin. So it's all essentially contained um, within the host program. And uh, the type of plugin might be um, an audio unit if it's on a Mac. It could also be a VST or a DXI or an RTAS, uh, depending on uh, which platform you're working in. Um, now, I personally prefer, and I think most people prefer, to work with plugins, and it's for a variety of reasons. Um, first is the one I already mentioned, everything is contained within the host. Um, and normally, as a result of that, you can actually set up a project you're working on, whether it be a, a finale, a notation file, Sibelius file, uh, or some uh, digital audio workstation project, you can set it up once and save it, and the next time you open the project, um, all of your plugins and everything will already be set up. Um, and for that reason, it's just typically simpler to use, and it's more tightly integrated um, into the software setup. So there you go. There's an overview of standalone versus plugin. And the last thing I want to cover before moving on to the next video is, um, you know, what do you need to use Virtual Drumline 2.5. Um, the first and obvious thing would be some sort of computer. Uh, you'll also need um, some sort of host, uh, namely Sibelius, Finale, or a sequencer or digital audio workstation of some sort, and Virtual Drumline, obviously. As far as the system requirements go, uh, you can read here Windows XP or uh, those specs or higher, Mac OS 10.4 or higher, a DVD drive to install the software. Uh, one gigabyte of RAM or more is recommended. Uh, I would suggest getting at least two, uh, depending on the size of the project. That'll just give you a little bit more of a buffer uh, once ensure that you don't run out of RAM. Uh, a MIDI keyboard is highly recommended, uh, but it's not necessarily required. And when we get into the Finale and Sibelius videos later, I think you'll see how it's beneficial to use them. Uh, but I know plenty of people who work without them. And obviously, you need the desire to learn and to become awesome. Um, so that's basically it for this video. In the next video, you'll get a nice tour of Contact Player 2. So if you stick around, we'll see you next time.